Hello everybody. Um, so today is the 22nd of March, um, but you will not see this video until the end of the month. Uh, however, I'm filming it now because I have my massive exams uh, the last two days of March and I wanted to show you guys how I am migrating into my new bullet journal for April. So um, you might have seen my migration video from my second into my third bullet journal, which is this one. Um, but I'm changing things up, so I wanted to do another. So first, let's take a peek. I, once again, have done the spreads in the back of my journal to help me with my migration. So you can still see I've got, I have a couple of spreads left here. I have this week and next week will be in this journal, and then it's the end. So what I've got is my third bullet journal review, um, as I did as actually I've done in all of my bullet journals, I like to take some time and think through what's gone well, what I'd like to change, various things like that. So I have keep, drop, and test. Um, so spreads that I like and want to keep, spreads that I used in this bullet journal that I think are no longer um, relevant or functional, and test are things that I would like to try out. For this particular one, because my fourth bullet journal will actually mark one year in the system, I did a one year in. So these headers where I sort of write out what I'm thinking, uh, those sometimes will change. And as you can see, I actually haven't finished this particular spread because I started this back in February. Um, and you can see that I actually have changed inks. Uh, I was using a fountain pen and I ended up switching out the ink and couldn't use the same one. But it works out because it shows um, sort of my thought process. Um, so I started making some notes in February and was starting to make changes, which one of the biggest changes in February, let's see if I can find when I started. So basically, um, my normal system for many months, well, for several months, was a full page daily, and I have a lettering page at the end of the week, and that was just what I did. I really didn't do collections in my bullet journal because I had a collection bullet journal, and I like the look of it overall. However, it was getting to be a little bit much for me to do every day, and it was just kind of overwhelming me. So in February, when I started thinking about doing my review, I actually switched um, I switched up my weekly from what it used to be. So this was my old weekly that I was using for a long time where I had the days and then all of my tasks. And I switched it up to this, which I've been doing um, with very few uh, modifications since about February, sometime, end of January, I believe, actually. I ended up going back to the standard bullet journal format. So things like this, that's what I was using this review for, and I ended up testing things out in February and then in March. Um, so if you've been following me on Instagram, you've seen that my style has been changing up um, kind of a lot in the past couple of weeks. A lot of it is due to the fact that I am just so busy right now that I needed it to be just quick and functional, and I haven't been doing as much decorating which don't worry, I will do a full flip through of this bullet journal once I finished, but just wanted to show you that this is why I started doing my review early was because I knew I had some big changes that I wanted to make and I wanted to sort of test them out um, before committing to them, if you will. Um, so I still have some time left. I don't know how much I'll fill in on this page. If I don't fill more in, then I will do some lettering or something to fill up the space. But honestly, I give myself the space if I need it, but I don't feel like I'm required to fill it in if I've, if I've done the review that I need to do. Next, as with my last time, I do this setup page where I sort of plan out the pages themselves in my journal, in my journal, excuse me. So, um, one of the things that I actually am changing is in this bullet journal, I did, I actually left a few pages, oops, somewhere back here. So I actually left a few pages, which I have a spread taped together because it's got travel information, so that I could fill them in in the front of my journal. And this time, I'm actually not doing that because I am going back to sort of a more traditional um you know, flip the page, set up a collection, and be done with it. Um, I felt that I didn't need to add those spreads in the front. So what I have here is actually 
my front of journal sort of long-term collections and then I actually already started thinking about April because I'm making some changes in April as well which you will see when I show you my setup so basically I go through and I write in roughly what I want in here I make any relevant notes so that I know and this is when I move into my new journal this is what I refer to um, when I'm setting up so what I will actually do is I will um, I went through the pages and this is one that's still left I did little sticky notes on here um, so I basically looked at this spread did sticky notes on the pages and then as I went through and filled them in I took the sticky notes off and then I check off when I'm done all of these spreads that are checked off are checked off because I've set off set up the spread not because I've actually filled in the spread so you'll see that in a second uh, the other part of my migration is I do my new Bujo to-do list and a lot of these will not get done until a little bit later, which is fine. And some of these I might actually move um, into a to-do list in my new bullet journal if it's going to take me a while. For example, um, this particular collection I don't need until July. So I might start it earlier, but it's not really necessary, so I might wait. So anything that's not going to get done before I actually finish this journal and move into my next, um, I will migrate to a collection over there. So without further ado, let's take a look. So I wanted to kind of compare my third bullet journal with my fourth bullet, bullet journal so you can see some of the changes that I'm making. So first up is my front page. I actually take this postcard in here and I like doing something a little different in the front of each of them. And you will see, I basically did a similar setup here. I have my name and my um, official like bullet journal email address if my journal ever gets lost. And I've actually left this blank because I am not yet sure what I want to do on here. I was thinking maybe some kind of a washi spread or honestly, I don't know. So I'm leaving it blank until I decide. Next, we have, I skip this page and we have the index. So once again, I skip this page and I have the index. So this is something that I started doing. My second bullet journal was actually the official bullet journal. And one of the things that I really, really liked was the style of the index where it was actually just a solid line and you didn't have this separation with page number and topic. And so I have hacked my own index and I basically just do it the same way the bullet journal index does. So you'll see that I do the name of the spread and then I have uh, colons and the page number. And this is something I did in this past journal. Um, I do also indent, so you'll see, for example, on my months, I actually will do the month and then I'll indent. And I'm planning on doing that as well. I just haven't actually filled in all of my index so far, but this, I love it. It just, it makes so much more sense if I do any sort of like page threading or notebook threading, I have more space to write page numbers and it just, ugh, it's wonderful. So that is my hack for the index. <laughs> I'm sure other people have done it, but this is just kind of how I use it. So the next step we have, oops, here we go. My year at a glance, I am doing 2017 again because we will only be in April, so obviously I will need this. So one of the things that I really started doing in my third bullet journal was having sort of a cohesive look for all of my front pages so that as I'm flipping through, I can recognize them as such. I mean, obviously, yes, they're in the front, but it just sort of helps them stand out a little bit. So this was my look here where I had this sort of bold black header and then I had these um, bars with a gray inside for my subheaders, if you will. So this time around, I picked two Tombow colors. So I'm actually using N45 and N55. So I have one that's a little darker and a little lighter gray. So the darker is the header and the lighter is anything that is a subheader. For my mini monthly calendars, I use a variety of techniques, but sort of all the same. Really the only thing that changes is if I change the color of the Monday through Sunday. This one I actually used, I believe I used the 01. So I actually have a Statler pigment liner box, but I used the pens up and I had to get a replacement set. So these are actually microns, um, but they are all the same numbers as before. So I just keep them in here because it's really handy to have it stand up like that. Um, so I used the 01 micron pigment liner to do the Monday through Sunday. I used, whoops, where are we here? So I have, um, sometimes I'll use the gray to do the Monday through Sunday and I used the light gray Statler fine liner to do the days. I, it's probably very hard to see here, but I actually have the weeks labeled. Let's see if I can 
I'm not sure if this is gonna work. So I actually have the weeks labeled so that when I go through, I know. Um, and I used a 0 0.025, which I actually forgot to grab that pen. Let's see, oops, uh, somewhere in here. Doo, doo, doo. Here we go. So I actually have this, what is he, a Pentel Sleecy, um, but it's a 0 0.025. So it's very, very fine point, so I can do very small lettering. So I use this when I write in the days of the month. So this is actually my overall look, and I've also done my vowels half size with the two dots under them. I did it for the zero in 2017 as well. I've seen various people doing things like this. I think some people will like alternate, some do top and bottom. I just chose to do all of my vowels are up at the top with the two dots under, just to give it some sort of cohesiveness. So the next page we have is my Calendex and Future Logs. You'll see I have again this header style and switching with my new one, I've kept the same look. The other big change that I've made is I've had this particular color code since I started using my bullet journal essentially and I decided it was time to change. It was just getting a little bit too bright for me and I actually got my Tombow set after I set up this journal and I love using the Tombows and I really wanted to use them more. So in this journal, I've actually redone my color code and you'll see, if you can see here, that my colors are actually pretty comparable except that I picked sort of a lighter tone. So this is my new color code and I keep them in this little bag here so I can just grab them. So this, I have a set of the grayscale Tombows that are in addition to my full set. Um, so I keep these in here to do lettering and then also my color code so that I can just grab this bag and have everything on the run with me. So there, Hop. Next up, we have my goals and financial. So financial is going to stay pretty much the same, which I will show you in a second. This, however, is really changing. Financial, as you can see, I followed my look for my front pages. However, um, it's basically the same. So I have per month, um, I haven't actually filled anything in yet, but I will fill in what my source of income is, what the actual income is, uh, what date I am paid or a check mark if it's an ongoing monthly thing. So I have for all four months that I expect to have in my bullet journal, I have my expenses. So I'll fill in all of my bills and my amounts. So I usually do this in pencil in case things change. And then I'll fill in the same bills and the month. So what day it comes out and anything that is pending. So money that I am receiving or money that I owe. So this basically the same. The big difference is with my goals. So what I have done is rather than having this four section, which as you can see, I really haven't done many of them. And in fact, a lot of these I actually pulled to do my year goal challenge. So where are you? Here we go. So 52 goals in 52 weeks for 2017. So this is my goal challenge for the year. And basically, after realizing that these were goals that I really wasn't getting around to, I decided to change this because I didn't want it to just be a page that sat there. I wanted to try and get stuff done. So what I've done is I went through this list and I considered what goals did I think I could reasonably get done or try to get done in the four months that I would be in this particular bullet journal. And I went through and I pulled out a number of the goals that I thought I would be able to do. Um, so what I tried to do, and you'll see I did not do it for all of them because I got ahead of myself, um, I tried to label the number so that when I went back to fill it in, I could easily find it. So, you know, for example, number seven was this one, read a second book in French. And you'll see here that these couple right there, I forgot to number, oops. But honestly, it's not that big of a spread. I'll be able to find them, it's no big deal. What I'm planning on doing is I want to refer to these goals and work on them. And then as I cross them off, it means that I can cross off a goal in here. So I'm hoping that this will help me A, actually do my goals, B, get through this list and not forget about them. And I don't have a C, but I'm hoping this will help me be more productive. So that is that. The next page is my wish list, Nespresso and waiting on, which is basically the exact same thing. The one change that I did was 
I gave my Nespresso tracker more space because honestly, I buy more coffee than I order things online. So I figured that was probably a good thing to do. So this is my ideas for sunshine and stationery and my tracker for followers. And this is one that I'm definitely, definitely changing. I realized that I really didn't use this page at all for the most part. I sometimes remember to go back and cross off the stuff, but I really just don't use this. I sort of post whatever I feel like and I'm okay with that. So what I'm doing is, oops, a little sneak peek. What I'm doing is basically just creating a tracker. So I've given myself one page um, and you'll see I actually have a note on here because I was thinking that I wanted to change up the look of this particular tracker. I just don't know how yet. So I'm leaving this page blank until I figure it out. And I have my YouTube. So YouTube is one that obviously my YouTube channel is not growing very fast, which is totally fine, but it also means that I don't need to dedicate an entire page for a tracker. So what I wanna do is actually combine these two pages into one. So I have ideas and my to-do list, and then the bottom half is going to be the tracker. And again, I'm not sure how I want the tracker to look, so I haven't filled it in yet. We actually now are at the end of my intro pages. So let me show you. So here I actually have more spreads before my monthly actually starts. Um, and I am not doing that this time. I am actually just going directly into the month. So this is going to be my intro page. So for example, in December, I have one and we'll flip to March now. So March, I also had an intro page. And this one, I, um, it's my year Boudreauxversary, so I wanted to do something kind of special. So I put a little tab on the page to remind myself, but I am leaving it blank until I have sort of a brainstorm of inspiration, if you will. So now let's look at April. So this is what March looked like. Um, I've been doing this for the past couple of months where I basically have my monthly calendar on one page. I have tasks for March, my future tasks for April, and a little mini calendar, and then a page brain dump. Well, this brain dump was basically just sitting there. Um, I have tasks on this that I have been migrating since essentially December and it was time to do something about it. So I'm doing a different look for April. So let me let me go through and actually show you March. So we have calendar, brain dump. Next is memories and gratitude, reading and tracker, and then I get into my weekly. So what is changing in April? I'm keeping my calendar. I love this setup. It works really well for me. I'm keeping tasks and May. Um, you can see that I actually chose 772 to be my color for the month. So I'm doing this color like a blush plus grays. And um, I actually sort of changed the orientation of this calendar for space reasons. Um, I like how it looks, but it, honestly, it was just to create um, more space so that I could have to write. On this right page, I'm no longer doing the brain dump. I'm actually doing kind of a memory log. And I've seen various people do this. Um, the traditional bullet journal log can sometimes be used um, to do this. I believe that Boho Berry was doing something like this, where it's like a line a day. And I really hadn't considered doing it until I realized that it is the 22nd of March. And while I have had memories this month, I haven't actually filled in this page. It was just too much for me to do right now. Um, I also, because in March I started doing my journaling pages here, um, I find that I'm, I'm kind of noting down my memories here and not necessarily doing them on here. So what my goal is, is I would like to do one line a day, something big that happened, and basically stop doing my weekly memory, my weekly little um, journaling log and see how it goes. I'll try it for you know a week or two at the beginning of April, see how it goes. Um, but I'd like to still have like the memory concept, but tweak it. So we'll see how this works. Um, it might be too little space and I will have to adjust then in May or restart doing my weekly level um, journaling log, we'll see. The next thing is I also, so, I thought of combining gratitude and memories because sometimes they are similar. 
So what I'm doing is I've, I've given myself less space for memories and more space for gratitude because I would like to go back to doing the doodled, let's see if I can find it somewhere in here. Uh, was it this month? Nope, it was in January. Where are you, January? Do, do, do. Here, um, so I wanted to go back to doing the doodled slash lettered lettering gratitude. Um, and so I decided to give myself a full page so that I could do a little bit every day. And I have a feeling that some memories will probably spill over into this and I'm okay with that. So we'll see how this works. Next, we have my reading log and tracker, which are basically the same. Um, you'll notice that I have a lot of blank space here. I am not yet decorating because I don't know if there might be something else I want to track or um, I don't yet know how I want to decorate this. So I'm just kind of leaving it blank for now. And then we will get into my week. Um, I want to wait because I have been considering tweaking what I track in my weekly. So let's see. So I've been considering tweaking how I set up my weekly a little bit. Um, especially since I'm getting closer to the end of my university semester. So I don't want to set up my first weekly in here until I have a chance to play with this week and I still have one more week in here. So I'm gonna just kind of let it go organically. Um, but yeah, so this is basically my setup so far. I will come back at some point once I start filling things in so you can see, but this is basically the way that I have set up this new bullet journal and hopefully these changes will um, go well. I mean, I'm sure some of them will need to be revised and tweaked, but I'm kind of excited to see how this goes. All right, so if you have any questions or comments, um, please feel free to leave them below. And if you like this video and want to see more, please think about subscribing. Bye.